Well, good morning, everybody, um, or good afternoon or good evening, depending on where you are. Um, what I want to show you today is just a very quick uh, tutorial on how I paint multicolored Highland cows. I've done about three or four original paintings of multicolored cows in the last sort of seven or eight years. Um, they were all commissioned pieces apart from the very first one that I did. I did that off, well, it was something that was suggested to me. Um, it was, it was to do with the, it was to do with the colour of someone's hair. It's like you know, it's a long story, um, and ever since I did that first one, they became quite popular. And then, of course, somebody came along in Scotland and started doing them really badly, um, and has you know made them a kind of household item. So, of course, anytime anyone sees a multicoloured Highland cow, they go, <laughs> Stephen Brown art. It's got fuck all to do with Stephen Brown art. Um, people have been painting multicoloured Highland cows for decades. Um, it's not a new thing. I certainly didn't invent it, and neither did he. Um, he didn't invent colour either, nor did he invent Highland cows, which some people uh, seem to try and pertain. Um, this kind of cult of the Maku mentality that goes on is kind of frightening, really. But anyway, enough about that. Um, these are my cows, and that's what I want to talk about. Um, this is a commissioned piece. The customer that's commissioned this has basically wanted a sort of reworking of the very first one that I did, um, but she wants a couple of colours added to it, sort of to stand out a bit more, um, because it matches the decor in a room. It's cushions and soft furnishings, that type of thing. Um, so what I've done here is I've obviously, as you can see, made a start to it quite simply because I'm in a bit of a rush. Um, as I have been since mid-December, um, it's now the beginning of March, um, I've just been really, really busy. Um, apologies to anybody that I've not been in touch with recently, um, I just, I really genuinely just haven't had the time. I will get round to, to uh, getting in contact with you as soon as I can. Um, so I've made a start with this. Now, one of the main tips I would give if you're wanting to paint cows, um, or I suppose anything else with sort of long hair, is to do things like the horns and the, the mouth or the nose area first, because these are solid objects. And what, well, obviously the cow's a solid job, it's not fucking transparent or see-through or anything. But uh, what, you, what you can do is, once you've actually painted the horn in, is you can then drape hair over the horn, because that's generally how Highland cows are. Um, and the same with the nose, you know, you can sometimes have hair coming down over the nose and it gives your paint a bit more perception and depth. Um, and it's also far easier um, to do these first rather than do the hair and then try and paint a nose around the hair. That just, it's a bit of a faff and, uh, you know, not necessary. So that's why I've got started with that. Now, in terms of colours, I just use a very basic palette. That's it there. The only um, colours on here that are a wee bit different are uh, this deep turquoise and this thalo green here um, simply because they are they are the colours that the customer specifically asked for um, to have added to it. They weren't in the original uh, the painting uh, but she wants them in this one. Um, other than that it's just a very basic palette, a bit of black, a bit of white, um, several shades of green, a red, a yellow, Couple of purples, including a deep purple. Da da da. Yeah, I did it. Um, and a couple of blues, thalo blue and a light blue and an orange. And that is really it. Um, it's not. It's not complicated at all. And as usual, I've got them on my cheap cardboard palettes. I do have actual palettes, but I never use them um, because I find this just a heck of a lot easier. I can, you know, when I'm finished with it, I can scrape off any unwanted paint, get it back in the tubes of the bottles and uh, throw this in the bin. I don't have to clean anything, it's great. Um, so, let's crack on. So the first thing I've done is I've done with a, a, I've done sort of a little bit with the black and then gone in with the thalo blue. And always start with your dark colours first because then you can build your lighter colours over that. And this is just acrylic, it's not oils. Um, and it lets you see where you're going with it and when you're doing this you can actually be quite free with it there's no there's no set rule um, you can just kind of throw paint at it and go with it and just see where it ends up really um, what I tend to use what I found very useful is this kind of soft uh, three-quarter inch brush 
and it's quite a quite a narrow one. And what I do is I just put a little bit of water on the end of it, and that just allows the paint to flow a little, little bit better. As you'll see, it gives you a bit more free movement with it. Um, because if you do that just with acrylic on its own, what you'll actually find is it starts to dry as you're moving it. Um, and then you end up with sort of areas where the paint starts to sort of break up, if that makes sense. Um, so it can be kind of kind of annoying. So I find just put a little bit of water on it um, just to just to let it flow that little bit better it makes all the difference. So that's pretty much done with the uh, phthalo blue there, what I'm going to do is go in with these purples and what I'm actually doing is I'm actually mixing them a little bit again just with a little bit of water and that just helps to make them stand out a little bit and as I say there is absolutely no set rule with this, you can be as random as you like and that's one of the great things with doing them this way As I say, this is absolutely nothing to do with Stephen Brown. Uh, the actual story behind the first one that I painted, I might as well tell you. Uh, do my little Bob Ross segment here and tell you, tell you, tell you a wee story. Um, the Tobermory gift shop on Mull, um, who sell my work and they sell originals and prints and all, all sorts of things of mine. The lady who owns the shop um, dyes her hair very very bright colours, I mean like, literally like that and someone had said to me you know why not do a cow that looks like Alice and I like her hair, sort of multicoloured and I thought right okay, I'd never seen one before um, so the first thing I did was google it um, just to make you know, just to see what was out there, just to make sure that I didn't, I wasn't going to end up doing something that was too close to somebody else's, where they could say, "Oh, you copied that," blah blah blah. Um, and I had a quick look around, and I was quite happy that what I was going to produce wasn't going to look anything like what was out there, or well, was going to be different enough anyway. I mean, obviously, it is a cow and it's multicolored. There's only so many ways you can do them. Um, and I managed to produce something that was, I think, stood out enough on its own, um, without, you know, needing to step on anyone's toes or anything like that. Um, and that was that, and it was kind of forgotten about for a couple of years, and then he came along, and then all of a sudden people were asking, is that a Stephen Brown? And I think it looks absolutely bugger all like it. Uh, and it just goes to show how blind some people are. You know, they claim to be fans of his work, but they can't tell the difference between one of his paintings and somebody else's that looks nothing like it. Um, it's kind of bizarre. So what I'm doing now is I'm just going in with a little bit of light blue. And again, this is just kind of a guide for me, because I need to know, because this area here, between the side of the head and the ear, is going to be a highlighted point. That's going to be lighter. That's what's going to define the shape of the head. And again, just down here, as you can see, I've already got in the sort of dark shadows for the ear coming out there. And again, it's the same rule as, let me see, we'll just see that the hair going over the, the horn there. Um, it's the same rule as doing a cow in natural colours. You start with your darker colours and work your way up to your lighter colours until the very end, the very last thing you should be putting on is a, effectively a watered down pure white um, just as a highlight on all the hair. I'm probably going with maybe mix a little bit of red in somewhere. As you can see this is just as say, completely random, no pattern, nothing. No plan, just be as free as a wind. Now 
I will apologise if you hear screaming Russian voices in the background. Um, I uh, I actually speak Russian, and what I quite often do when I'm in my studio here is I will put Russian television on, um, just as a sort of noise in the background. It's it's really just to keep my knowledge of the language um, up to a certain standard. Because quite, I mean, I don't speak it anywhere near as often as I used to. Um, I actually used to live uh, in Russia for a few years, so I was pretty much talking it every day. I mean, I've never been what I would call fluent. Um, I was pretty good. Grammar and things like that, absolutely awful. But again, that's that's another story. Um, and of course, now that I'm back in Scotland. I don't speak it anywhere near as often as I used to, so I find this kind of helps just to keep keep the language fresh in my head. I don't generally pay attention to what's actually on. Um, it's, usually, it's usually some program where people are screaming and debating about politics and various other things that, to be honest, really don't interest me. I'm not a political person in any way, shape, or form. Um, but as I say, it's just to kind of keep the language fresh in my head. So if you do hear them shouting and screaming at one another because they're, they're quite a quite an opinionated and passionate people. Um, that's what it is. Okay, so I've just gone in with a bit of red there, and then what I'll do next is I'll go in with a bit of orange. Now, what I'll do is I'll kind of blend that slightly with the red, just to give it a kind of. It, it gives the colour a. I want to say a better transition, but I don't know if that's the right word. Not the, probably the best in technical terms, but it gives it gives the hair a more realistic look because you're blending each colour in with another colour that's similar. You know, the sort of the red and the orange is a very similar colour. If you sort of blend that in, it gives it much more of that sort of um, sort of translucent effect that hair tends to have. You know, hair's not solid; um, it is kind of see-through to a degree. And again, what you'll find with this, just like um, doing a cow, whether it's in black and white or it's more natural colours, is you will go over the same areas again and again and again. So, for some it can be quite a laborious process, for others they just kind of, I tend to just zone out and go with it. It's quite, um, quite therapeutic, I suppose. And then we'll go in with some of the yellow, because that's, again, close to the orange. And also the yellow is a very bright colour, so I don't want to put too much of that in. And hopefully you can see, I'll maybe try it here, you can see how I'm blending that yellow. The white there is almost disappearing with the orange there. I think you can see that. And it just, as I say, gives it that much more realistic effect. It's more subtle as well, it's not too, too in your face either. And then what you can do is obviously because acrylic dries darker, and these initial layers are quite thin, once that's actually dried you can go around the far edge of it with a bit more colour and you get a highlight. And again, just that gives you a bit more depth to the colour of your hair. Mm -hmm. 
I know there's some people probably would do this a completely different way. That's fine. I don't think that there's really a right way or a wrong way to do it, in all honesty. Um, would I say that this is my style? Not particularly, it's just it's how I do it. It's how I did the first one and I've just kind of done them all since. It's worked for me. It might not work for you. You might find uh, doing something else works better for you. It's completely personal preference as far as that goes. Now what I'll do next is I'll go in with a bit of green because um, I need to get that in somewhere. But you can see just how kind of free and easy this really is. Once you've got your sort of basic outline of your cow done, it's just a case of rocking it from there. It's, it's not, not difficult at all. And what we'll do is go over this with a lighter green. And I do this while the, the darker green is still wet. I don't let that, try not to let that dry. If it does dry, you just wet your brush a little bit. That's all you do. And that'll, that'll help you out. And this actually, interestingly enough, this is actually the second time I've had to paint this uh, particular paint for this customer. Um, because the first one was damaged in transit. The client stays away down in England and the courier service that delivered it, um, I think they kicked it up the driveway. Now, it was in a box, it was in a, you know, a, a double corrugated um, cardboard box and there was actually a thin sheet of plywood um, inside as well to protect the front of it. But they had somehow torn all the packaging on the outside and actually damaged the piece of the wood that had then gone through the bubble wrap that was on it. The bubble wrap was about that thick. It had gone through the bubble wrap and actually cut. It was only maybe about a quarter of an inch of a cut, but it wasn't something that, you know, the, the client had paid for a, a nice new um, original piece of art and you know, it came with a hole in it, so, you know, you wouldn't accept a hole in your car if you bought it new, so, you know, she wasn't going to accept it either, which I was in complete, you know, I completely agree with, I didn't have a problem with that whatsoever. Um, now, it was insured, um, it was insured to cover my costs if I had to redo it, because I always take that for granted, that, well, you know, I always take that into the equation, rather, that, uh, it will get damaged, um, so financially, you know, it's not. I'm not out of pocket in any way, um, but it does mean that I've had to find the time to actually sit down and do it, which is not as easy. But uh, yeah, that's it. Getting redone now. The customer's very, un very understanding. I have to say, um, she was really good about it. Um, you know, some people would rant and rave and say it was your fault, um, even though. Well, you don't work for the post company, but that's just the way some people are. Okay, so what I'm doing here now is I've just added some white to my phthalo blue. And we're just going in and doing some of the shoulder area here, which would be a bit lighter. Put a bit of water on there. course if you do have any questions um, just pop a comment down below and I'll do my very best to answer it for you I'm not saying I'll give you the right answer I'm not always right um, I'm always prepared to be wrong that's how you learn but 
I certainly will do my best to help you out if I can. As you can see, basically what I'm doing is I'm following the same, same lines as before. So just starting to gradually fill the colour and go in with the lighter layers. You know, so if you do try this and it doesn't work for you, that's that's fine. You know, so as I say, not not everything works for everybody. Um, we're all different. But I would say give it a try. I think you might find it. You know, if you are struggling, this might be what helps you and gets you out of the bit. I'm not particularly gentle with this brush, what I do is I tend to go back and forth as you can see and what that allows, again, it just allows for the colours to kind of blend in a little bit better and make it look just that little bit more natural if that makes sense. And what I'll do here is I've already done just a straight yellow, I'm going to do a little bit of white on it and then just go kind of back over just the far edges of where the yellow was but you can see that if you see here there's a sort of darker yellow what I'm doing is just going round the outside of that line with the lighter one that I've now now got here with the white in it If that lighter shade, like you see here, picks up any of the colour underneath and drags it with it, that actually work in your favour because again, it gives you that translucent effect that uh, that hair has. every so often I'll kind of break away from the line and just come right over and this again is just building layers to the hair and building that depth for you as well Just hit him with some phthalo blue with the white. Uh, I just want to get my highlights done in this area.
hopefully you see there just how that's starting to come together with all the different uh, shades of the same colour just building it up to lighter layers do here is I'll actually just show you me just putting the, the straight white in again this is just sort of watered down white and again what you do is just go on the outermost edges there which are going to be your highlighted areas Again, you can be kind of random with this as well. There's no, no rules. What you'll find is because your white is watered down, is it'll be a little bit translucent, so the colours beneath it will show through as well, which is exactly what you want. Hope you can see how that's going there. Okay, I think at the moment, just to keep this video reasonably short, because that's nearly half an hour now that I've been gassing on about, um, I hope that you can uh, see that okay and how we've built the depth up there on the, the actual colours of the painting. And you can see just how the, the white has helped to give the hair a bit of depth to it. And that is basically how it's done. Simple as that. Um, I say give it a go see how you get on um, hopefully it helps you out and if you do have any questions uh, just pop them down in the comment below and I'll do my very best to help you out okay thanks very much for watching guys and enjoy the rest of your day